Hello, hello, and thank you for being here. I'm very excited. First time um, at the uh, React Live, also because it's the first time at the React Live. First one of many more. So, who am I? My name is Max. I'm uh, principal engineer at Dazon. Thanks for the uh, introduction. And uh, I did grow up in uh, Rome. I was born there, and then I moved to London uh, four years ago. You can find me on Twitter, underscore, at Masgallo, or um, on maxgallo.io. So what's the agenda? What are we going to talk today? So first hit, immediately, we're going to see why reinvent. What does that mean? And after we learn why we are doing some things, we are going to reinvent it, like in live coding, reinventing. And then we're going to add React into the mix, because I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with React and MobX all together, and uh, you may be curious to see what's going on behind the scenes. So why reinvent exactly? This is a picture of me when I was nine years old, and uh, I had uh, my particular way of discovering things was by taking things apart, by dismantling them, and finding out what was inside. Um, I wasn't pretending to understand everything that was going on inside. I remember a VHS recorder. I have no idea what was going on there. And uh, I wasn't even able to put it back together. But I was learning. I was curious. I was doing something. And today I want to bring some of that curiosity to this stage. I want to borrow some of that curiosity because not only we're going to see inside some of the things we use every day, but also we are going to reinvent our own version. So one step forward from a uh, nine year, years old me. So reinvent Mobex. Time for live coding. So on the left hand side, you can see a uh, white part which is when I'm going to write. On the right-hand side, you can see a dark one, which is simply node running what's on the other side. So let's see what we have here. First of all, we are importing observable and auto run. This is a Mobex example running in node. And uh, we are importing two things, observable and auto run. We are using observable straight away, immediately here. And we are using observable in a way that it's generating one observable called album from an object, great album, but, but by the way, this object has a bunch of properties and uh, the output, album, is unobservable. Then we have authorrun. What is authorrun? Authorrun has a little bit of black magic going on. So the first thing that it does is that it immediately runs the function. So when you see it synchronously, boom, the function that you pass here inside gets run, so it gets fired immediately. And after that, it will re-trigger that function every single time one of the observable uh, in that function changes. What does that mean exactly? It means that if I try to change some of these observable properties, like doing album play count one, because maybe I'm listening, then I'm listening even more, and when I do that, What's happening is that Mobex is re-triggering this whole function. And on the right-hand side, you can see that I get my count zero, which is the first run, then reaction, and then count one, count two, count three. And this is like a very basic example of Mo Mobex. So observable, so far we don't know exactly what's going on. Auto run, a little bit of black magic, but re-render stuff when observable properties change. So what does that mean, reinvent? It means that I'm going to get, get rid of this stuff and I'm going to write my own version. So function observable. And inside observable here, I'm passing an object called target object. And then I'm defining auto run. This is called runner. I want to start from auto run. As engineer, software engineer, we like to have big problems and we split those into smaller problems. So I want to split my auto run function into two smaller problems. First problem is I need to find out which are all the observables properties I'm accessing. Because if I know that, later on I can try to do something on those. So my first step is to find observables. The second step oops, is actually rerun the runner for every, not for every, every time one changes. Yes, I, I spelled every in a very bad way. Rerun every one 
changes. So we have a list of things that are changing, and after, with that list, we're going to rerun the autorun function when one of those change. So let's start with the, with the first one, finding all the observable. So what's going to happen here is that, first of all, I'm going definitely to run the function. So as I tell you, first thing that autorun does, synchronously it runs the function that you're passing. So no big news here. But while I'm running it, I actually need to do something for my find observable tasks. So how can I find all the properties I'm accessing? So in, um, in JavaScript, as in many other languages, one way of accessing properties is through getters and also setters for setting. So somehow I need to be in the middle between the consumer, which is anyone that is, that, that is doing album.name or album play count and the album itself. I have to be in the middle, like I have to be on every getter every time I try to get some of those properties. But, and in ES6, we got actually this function out of the box and it's called proxy. So proxy is something with this uh, particular syntax which sits between the consumer, so someone that wants to access that object and the object itself and is able to intercept all the communication that's, that's going on. So how does, how does proxy work uh, in, in a practical way? So you can pass the, the object that needs to be proxied, and then you pass another object with get and set, uh, which I'm going to defy object value uh, and set is key. And our getter, no big news here, is return object uh, of key. And then, not keyboard even, key. Uh, <coughs> Other than the getter, we have a setter. Setter does object and key and also have a value because it's a setter. And here we do object dot val dot key. Yes. Object dot key equal to value. So nothing new so far. I'm just setting up the, the whole thing. Remember, I need to intercept all the getters. So how do I do, I do that? I'm actually here. I'm in the right place, this line here. And uh, in order to do that, allow me to define something outside called access observables, which is an empty object. And just before the runner, I'm going to make sure that my access observable is still an empty object. And at every getter, every time we interact with one of the observables, I'm simply going to do access observable dot push, and I'm pushing the key here. So. In order to show you that this one is actually working, I'm going to console log uh, access observable. This is going to be an array. So on the right hand side, you see count zero, which is when I run that function. And after, you see the list of all the properties I accessed. Not big news so, so far, but our first task is actually working. And now, in order to do the second task, I want to introduce to one, one concept, which is the derivation graph. So derivation graph if a is a concept in MOBEX which connects uh, the observables on the, on the left hand side with the reaction on the right hand side. So it's a graph that connects all the reaction happening like the auto run method with the observable. And how are we creating this graph, this graph of connection? We, we do by starting from the reaction itself. So the reaction is the function that I'm passing to the auto run. So I run that function and I'm able to go through the graph up to the observable values, exactly those things that I was, uh, I was accessing with, with the proxy and the, the getter. So if I manage somehow to create this graph, I can move to phase two. And phase two is the same graph, but goes in the other direction. So for phase two, if one of the observable change, we'll have to fire all the reactions that are connected to that observable. And that's perfectly doable. If you follow the, the yellow mark here from observable values to all the steps in the middle to reactions, this is still walking through the graph. So step one, creating the graph. Step two, um, walking the, the graph in the opposite direction. It feels very complex, but in our case, the graph is going to be just a simple object, so very basic graph. So I'm going to define const uh, derivation graph. 
which is an object. And this derivation graph is going to be populated uh, exactly here. So when I do access observables dot for each, for each, and for each of these observable, I'm going to make, make sure, first of all, that derivation graph of key is equal to derivation graph of key or empty object. And then, yes, no. And then I'm going to do push. And what I'm pushing here exactly, I'm pushing the runner. If you remember, the runner is the function that we are passing here. So I'm creating the graph in this very line here. I'm connecting the keys with the reactions, with my runner. And um, if I save, nothing will, will, will change. Actually, almost few things are broken uh, because I wrote push. <laughs> I should write a library called push. Push. So not, nothing changed because we didn't did the last bit. So we created the, the graph and that's awesome. Now we need to walk the graph in case one of the observable property change. But how do I know if something changes? It happens to be that I have a setter here. And if you want to change anything on those observable things, it's going to go through this setter. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do derivation graph, deri derivation graph uh, of key for each. And for each runner here, I'm going to do runner, I'm going to fire that runner. Yes, on the right hand side, if you see, uh, it may not be e e exciting, but it's kind of it is because we re rebuilt it and we saw that the count are finally coming. So let's do a quick recap of what's going on. Auto run. First of all, we do um, collect the, all the observable properties that we are accessing with the auto run uh, function. After that, we create the derivation graph and we use the derivation graph to walk the other way around in order to have all the reactions. And that's all I wanted to show you re regarding MOBEX. And uh, I want you to, I want to write a little abstraction and uh, we're gonna need this, this, this one later. So you have to have a little faith in me. So let's do function create reaction and I'm passing a function called on change. I'm simply refactoring the auto run function a little bit. Oops, return. Uh, truck, so I'm returning an object that contains truck that accepts one parameter, which is truck function. And in this function, I'm basically doing everything that was happening inside my auto run function. So nothing really interesting yet. Uh, I'm changing things to make sure it's still compiling and this is on change. So why the hell I am doing here? I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing this kind of uh, abstraction because in the auto run, I'm able to write the following, const reaction, create reaction, and I can pass the runner because this is the function that will get re-render every single time. So if something changes, this is what it gets called. But it also, I'm explicitly going to say reaction.track runner. So, um, Reactions in MOBEX are, um, are something a little bit more deep down auto run, as you saw from this example, are a special kind of reaction. Reaction is much more explicit, like you're tracking this and you want to react with that. Auto run is everything together. But we may, we, we're gonna see later on how these two concepts, what I'm tracking and what I'm reacting to, could be two dif dif different things. So, that's it, that's MOBEX. So now it's time to add some React. So how do we add React to this project? I want to write a very basic UI so we can see MOBEX and React playing together. So I'll, let me define album here as a React component. No. And in this React component, we are going to use a div, uh, h2, why not? And we have album.title. And then album dot play count. Okay, so far nothing really uh, interesting in this album. And then I need to render this album. And uh, where I'm rendering it, I'm rendering to a document 
document get element by id and you have to trust me that there is an id called root and that i should probably not do that um okay almost everything good uh i need to add a bunch of stuff const react equal react and then we did use also the render from react dom so const react uh not react render we require react dom okay almost good uh there is just one problem is that i was running something with node and no node and this particular uh example with react they don't really uh play to, together that well so i'm going to stop this one hopefully i'm going to get rid of this one and behind the scene you can see that there is a parcel uh task running so parcel is bundling all my stuff together so i don't have to think about uh, a, a lot of stuff and in the corner here there is a small uh, browser and uh, which is actually mirroring whatever happens on the code is actually my browser my reference browser so um, just to to show you that this is the the real one i can actually change it and it's going to change yay so all good so far this is react like 101 or even be, be before 101 and we are not really interesting into that so uh we want to connect react with mobex so what we're going to do is we're going to import uh um, a method called observer uh, if you're familiar with React, you already know what I'm about to do. This is coming from a module called Mobex React. And yes, exactly that. That was scary. Uh, React. To, uh, so Mobex React is able to connect Mobex with, guess what? React in a way that we're going to see in a second. So let me define uh, observer album as the observer of album so and then i'm going to use observer album here observe okay so you have you're not seeing anything working still on the right hand side is still okay computer zero no matter if we are actually changing the model of that view because we have around uh, our awesome implementation like custom implementation so let me get rid of this one for one second and uh, bring back observable and auto run what will happen hopefully in the um, in the corner in the right is that you see the react component is re-rendering but what is actually going on i'm connecting mobex my mobex state with the react component and i'm re-rendering the react component every time something changes in my uh in in, in my state that's pretty cool um but if we want to analyze what's what's happening uh i would like to show you the similarity between the auto run that we saw b before and what's going on here with react so auto run uh, once again it re-render the function that you pass every time one of the observable in that function change and if we use the render method as that function we are actually having a very nice connection between mobex and react between your state and your view and your view is going to re-render on its own you don't even have to track down who needs to be re-rendered for what because we are not re-rendering anything thanks to the derivation graph we know exactly all the reactions that we need to re-render and so how do we translate this auto run album render unfortunately i can't copy and paste that line is not gonna work you have to trust me on this one so uh, i'll bring back our implementation and i'll as you know the drill i'm getting rid of observer and i'm defining my own observer so the function observer uh, which accept one parameter, which is case, in this case, I'm gonna call it base com component. Function observer return, actually, let, let create it. Uh, if you're familiar with I order component, we are simply wrapping uh, the component that we are passing. We are giving it a different behavior and we are returning a new component with this different behavior plus the original one. So 
This wrap component, let me return it before I forget about it. So what's happening inside this wrap component? Inside this one is where we need to create the reactions. So we need to create the, the reaction. So I'm going to do const reaction equal to what, what should I do here exactly? There is a problem because this is a function component, a functional component. So it's stateless. So it will be re, um, re triggered, refired every single time the component we render. And reaction, it's something that should last for the life cycle of the component. So I need to add a state to something that is stateless. So uh, th th that's why I'm going to use React hooks and the use ref method. Use ref, you may be familiar with it for. DOM nodes, but it could actually be used just to store any kind of variable for the whole life cycle of the React component. So use ref, uh, we are creating the reaction here. So that constant is going to stick around for the whole life cycle. It doesn't matter how many times we are re-rendering. So uh, let me probably need to import uh, use ref and also Trust me on this one, I need to import your state. Require React. So everything in the bottom right corner is still empty, so still sad browser. But we're nearly there, nearly there. So we have our reactions. So if our reaction is not populated, so react, reaction dot current, uh, current is the way uh, that you access, you set, and you, 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 you get information with use ref. So if it's not set, we are going to do reaction.current equal to create, create reaction. You can start seeing the similarity between the auto run function and our observer function here, because we are creating another reaction. The difference that now we need something here. That function was a function that will, will re-render the component every single time we call it. How can I create a function that will render a component every si single time? Again, I need to ask some help to, from, the, from React hooks. So I'm defining use force update. As use force update, which uh, with an initial uh, state of zero, and then I'm returning a function that does set x, not x. It may be uh, basic, uh, but this is actually something that is going on inside MobX. I would suggest you to have a look at the, uh, at the source code. So this is a trick used to flip the state every single time between 0 and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, so the component gets re-rendered -re every time. And these allow me to write force update which is use force update here. And let's get some space. And inside my create reaction, I can finally write, if I know how to type, I can finally write my force update. So every time something changes in that reaction, I'm going to re-render that component. Almost there, almost there. We are missing the track part. So if we, for a second, collapse this one, and we keep autorun in, uh, in, the, in the view. Autorun is creating the reaction and is also tracking something. So we need to track. What do we need to, to track? Which are the things we need to uh, re-render the component for? Exactly all the observable that we access through the, the render method. So let me write let uh, output here. Output. Uh, and output uh, is going to be populated in reaction dot current e uh, dot track. So I'm tracking. Track is a function, and I'm passing to track another function, where I'm doing output equal to base component. If you remember, is the one that is coming from here. And once, since all of this is happening synchronous, synchronously, I can perfectly do return output. So hopefully, when I save this one, 
Yes, so bottom right is working. So my view, it's re-rendering based on what's happened on the model. And the connection is all here in 15 lines of code inside the observer. So what we did, we encapsulate the original observer, sorry, the original component into wrapped component. Uh, we created a reaction using the use ref. So we are using something that will last through the life cycle of the component. And then we are forcing the update every time one of the observable changes. And that's all I wanted to, to show you from the live coding section. So we'll go back here to the slide. That was a lot of code, it was intense, so thank you for the patience. And uh, I want to leave you with, with a message. If you have something that you like, that you may want to know more, or a library that you use every day, try to be curious. What, watch what's inside, try to disassemble it. Thinking, try to take it apart and watch what's inside that open source project maybe, because it could be way easier than you think is going to, to be. And then try to reinvent, try to build your own leader version like I did here to see exactly which, which are the challenges, which are the trick that they had to solve in order to make that thing working. And when you do that, you don't really have to think, but you're, you're, you're learning, you're not, you, you don't need, do not need that to do task learning the X and that. If you do the first two things, you're learning automatically. And once you have learned something, please share it. Come to this stage next year, on the uh, next React Live conference, and show to everybody else what you did. So disassemble, reinvent, learn, and share. Thank you very much.